haven't seen one of those for a long time. <laughs> How do you make money for nothing? You get a trampoline or a bed. Well, for a guess out, we could have a jump on it. The answer could be hiding in the 30 million tonnes of household waste we throw out every year. They are ready to be re-loved again, don't you think? That's why entrepreneur Sarah Moore wants to get her hands on things before they hit the skip. Wow, what a retro-looking thing. I love old stuff. Finding it, buying it and reusing it. And I've turned that passion into a business. Transforming items that nobody wants into things that I can sell for a profit. And with some of the country's elite designers and makers... Oh, what have you got? They are a bit weird, aren't they? I love them. She can transform her finds into desirable... Are they beautiful? A labour of love. Valuable... I've never seen anything like that. And hopefully saleable items. Martin, those are amazing. Thanks very much. If Sarah is successful, <laughs> then she can hand the profits back to the very people who had no idea there was cash to be made from their trash. £370. That's amazing. At the Whitley Recycling Centre in Surrey, the cars are rolling in, the locals are rolling out their rubbish, and here to roll up her sleeves is upcycler Sarah Moore. Well, you know I love a day at the recycling centre, but I do often wonder, will the rubbish be rubbish, or will I be able to cherry-pick interesting things that I think I can turn a profit on? Sarah has special permission to scour the site. Have you been smashing up your furniture there? In search of three things with the potential to be sold on for cash. So just, just branches, that's probably, probably not for me. Trish and Vicky have arrived, but will Sarah want to leak through what they've brought along? Oh, hi there, hello. Hi. Hi, oh, sorry to bother you, just admiring your chair. Chairs? Chairs, how many have you got? Yeah. Four. Oh, OK, yeah. sorry, I should introduce myself. Hi, I'm Sarah. I'm Vicky and this is my sister, Trish. Oh, hi there, how do you do? Hello, um, hello. I'm looking at them and I'm not quite getting the age of them. Have you had them a long time? Well, they belong to my parents and um, I think you said... Early you 60s, them? Early 60s. Think? OK. They actually look to me like they may have had a refurbishment yes, at some Dad point. Yes, Dad recovered them. He repolished the leg, the yeah. wood, and then yeah. recovered them. Yeah, I'd forgotten about that. Yeah. Yeah. And so why have they ended up here today? Dad died before, Mum died recently, and they haven't got up-to-date fire credentials, so we can't sell them or anything. So we the thought... last thing we could do was bring, bring them here. To... Oh, dear, I'm so sorry to hear about your yes. parents. It's obviously such a yeah. tricky thing Just to do. Just no-one when... in the family wanted them, did they? I think they've got a lovely look to them, and it'd be great to perhaps see yeah. if somebody else would like to have them in their house and in their home again. Yeah. Oh, absolutely, and I think yeah. my mum especially... She'd um, love it that they, she would they love weren't it. being thrown she away. She would love it they weren't being thrown away. Yeah. She didn't throw anything away. Excellent. Well, so nice to meet you both. I'll grab this one and don't go anywhere. All now. right. OK, <laughs> so that's excellent. Sarah's first find is four dining chairs. Trish, Vicky, relieved they've avoided the skip. We're yeah, really well, happy that they're actually, going to be used. Aren't yeah, we? my mum would be so, mum would be so pleased, yeah, wouldn't she? she? Would. She'd be smiling because yeah, she's she would. she would love for them to be she reused. She'd like to be there and help do it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> probably would. Yes. I've got four fabulous chairs here, great swooping arms, and they're comfortable. With a bit of refreshment and a new colour scheme, these are going to be hot to trot. But who does Sarah hope can bring some serious style to these dining seats? It's Ollie Cluey, an expert upholsterer with the skills to turn forgotten furniture into sensational seating. I love working with interesting styles of chairs and fabrics and uh, really helping people realise uh, how to bring pieces back to life and, you know, inject a bit of fun and colour into their lives. You know, I really do think that each piece is individual. You've got to sit there and kind of let the chairs talk to you. You know, sometimes chairs do talk to you. It might be broken, it might be battered, but we can fix it and we can make it better and we can give it a new life. And I love that and it's, it's what I do and what I love. But will Ollie still have a can-do attitude when he sees what Sarah's sending his way? That's one down, two to go. Sarah's back browsing the boots. 
Um, he was lovely. Yeah, exactly. He's old, isn't he? 90, 90 something. Is he yeah. that old? He's an old chap, isn't he? I hope you're not talking about me, Sarah. Less chatting, more looking, please. I've only gone and found it. The mythical money tree. I've got one. Great specimen. You need to find things that can produce cash rather than waiting for it to grow on trees. Andrew's arrived, but does he have a money maker in his boot? Hello there. Hi. Yeah. Uh, how do you do? I'm Sarah. Hi, I'm Andrew. What are you clearing out? Oh, what are they? Old sacks? Yeah, clearing out a garage for a friend and, um, yeah, she, she doesn't want them anymore, so just brought them up here. They look like they're really old, don't they? Have you had a chance to have a look at them? Uh, there was a couple of them, yeah, a Brentford Market was mentioned on one. Um, this one, I didn't really look at that one, yeah, pencils, so... Is it only me that looks at a pile of things like that and thinks, oh, that's exciting, I might be able to make something out of that? I, I did look at them, I thought they might be useful for something, but I couldn't really think what I could do with them, so, sadly, yeah, that's why I brought them up here. Well, I would love to take them off your hands. So, any chance I could have them? Of course. Well, I'll take those off your hands and get my thinking cap on. Thank you so much. Great, thank you. Thank you. Sarah's bagged 11 Hessian sacks. Andrew, what on earth will she do with them? Uh, well, what could you do with them? Um, I don't know. I thought long and hard, but I don't know, maybe a bag, perhaps? Something like that. Oh, nice idea. Sarah? The typography is really interesting. So I'm hoping that we can make the most of that and make them into things that look decorative and are useful and not let them end up in that skip. And for this project, Sarah needs a maker with sat loads of creativity. Rosanna Geffy, a designer who hates to see old fabric go to waste. And when it comes to terrific transformations, she has bags of experience. I would say my favourite thing to make, but it's usually something quite unique to that person, quite unique to their tastes. I really like that because it really tests my, my abilities and tests my brain. So I really like doing those because they are a bit more of a challenge and it's always really satisfying when I see the end result. Glad to hear you like a challenge, Rosanna. You might have your work cut out finding a stylish new use for these old sacks. With two items tucked away for her makers... Oh, have you got anything good in there? Sarah now needs to find something she can work on herself. Look at that, that's a, um... I've got no idea what that is, what? Edward's arrived, but will Sarah recognise any potential in his rubbish? Hello there. Hello. Hi. Hi. I'm loving the look of your rubbish. Hi, oh, I'm, okay. I'm Sarah. Hi, Sarah. Yes, nice to meet you. What's your name, sorry? Uh, Edward. Edward, how yeah. do you do? Um, the rug looks um, amazingly old. Uh, have you had it long? Yes, it's a Persian carpet from my great-grandparents. Uh, it's been in the family a long, long time. It's very, very warm. They are difficult. If you love them and you use them, they end up looking like that, don't yes, they? Yes, unfortunately, yes. And actually, the drawers, they look like they've got some real age. Th these are well. English from a bureau that was unfortunately ravaged with uh, woodworm. Right. And the drawers are OK. Um, these are from my wife's... Grandfather. I'm actually strangely attracted to all of all of the things. I've got a few ideas about how they okay. could be repurposed. Sure. Would you mind if I had them instead of them running up? No, no, not at all. It'd be nice to have it recycled by all means. Yes. Lovely. Well, I'll grab the rug and then come back to the drawers. Okay. Very welcome. Nice to meet you, Edward. Thank you yep, so much for no that. No problem. Sarah has four drawers, one rug, and a challenge on her hands. Edward, any thoughts on what she might do with the rug? Um. <laughs> I really don't know. Fair enough. How about the drawers? The drawers maybe make some nice shelving or uh, put as a fascia to other furniture to utilise the fact that it's a nice piece of old oak. There's nothing veneered or ply or anything about these drawers. And as for the rug, care-worn or perhaps a beautiful item. I've got a real bundle of things here. They are ripe for rescuing from the recycling centre. And with that, Sarah has what she came for. Ollie's upholstery skills could be tested trying to rejuvenate the four dining chairs. Rosanna will need to come up with a creative way to repurpose the sacks and send them off to new homes. And Sarah has a rug and four drawers to work on. But can she come up with a plan to produce a decent profit? 
I cannot tell you how many boots I have looked into today. I have definitely put the hours in, but I think I've got great results. You may not think it now, but I reckon I've got money makers there. Leaving the recycling centre behind, Sarah's in Margate to hand deliver the four dining chairs to Ollie. I'm really looking forward to seeing what she's bringing me. I'm, I'm hoping it's not going to be too bad. I think I've got a lot of work for whatever she brings, but, yeah, can't wait to see. Nice to get these chairs lined up, and I hope Ollie takes a shine to them, because these are actually quite a tricky project. There's lots of reupholstery to be done, and their style is just not on point. But if we make the right decisions, I reckon this lot could look super smart. What have you got for... Oh, there's four. There's four. Right. This is quite a big job, then. I like them. Should we take them in and see, what, see what's to be done? Yeah, let's have a look. Fantastic. Quite unusual, aren't they? I think what they actually are is a bridge chair. Oh, posh. Very nice. They are. They're a really nice small chair, a lower seat height. They've got comfy back and comfy arms because you can sit there playing bridge for ages. I think these are probably 50s. Oh, I just love hearing things like that. I feel like it's really brought them to life and that explains why they are, are the four carvers. So I think we've got scope to do whatever we like. We can paint them, anything. But I do think they're going to need a really strong look if they're going to be repositioned. I want to kind of go Art Deco. I think something kind of a little bit subtle and modern looking is going to be really nice. I'm loving your vision. It feels to me like you've got a really clear direction to go in. If you can find that kind of lovely, luxurious Art Deco fabric for these, that would be great. What are you thinking is going to be cost-wise? I'm thinking in terms of the time, stripping them down and everything, probably looking at £75 a chair for the work. Right. Then once I kind of have a proper think and find the fabric, we're probably looking at maybe another 100 quid for the fabric. OK, so we're looking at roughly £100 a chair, then. Is that where we are? I can do that for you, I reckon, yeah. Brilliant. OK, well, plenty to be getting on with. So thanks so much. See you soon. Yes, nice one. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Sanding off this lacquer could be really difficult. I'm really hoping that it hasn't penetrated into the wood. I'm hoping we can get a lovely clean wood underneath that. Yeah, I've got my work cut out for me, I think. I'm going to have to get busy. Ollie has a budget of £400 to try and rejuvenate the bridge chairs. But will pulling off a subtle but stylish new look prove to be a bridge too far? In Surrey, bag maker Rosanna has taken delivery of the old Hessian sacks. I'm really excited about working on these because there's a lot of fabric to work with and so I've got quite a few ideas what I could do. Uh, so I'm quite keen to speak to Sarah and see what she thinks as well. Hello. Hi, hello. Rosanna, Sarah, how are you doing? Hi, Sarah, I'm good, thanks. How are you? Really well, thanks. And it's nice to hear that you're good given the fact that those sacks I sent you aren't exactly exciting. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't know about that. There's some quite interesting ones here. I mean, some have got a few little holes, obviously, where they've been used and a few marks, but I think, on the whole, some most of them are in good condition, actually. So, yeah, I've got some ideas of what I can do. Oh, brilliant. Well, I was thinking we could go in a direction that makes them quite smart, but I don't know if that's possible in the condition they're in. Yeah, no, I was thinking um, perhaps a couple of holdalls, so using the text on some of the better ones um, on some holdalls with mixing them with some leather. Uh, so I've got some really nice uh, sofa leather that I could use on the base and a couple of old belts, actually, that I think would work really well as, as handles. So there's at least enough to do two good size holdalls here. And then with the rest, I was thinking, you know, these little baskets you get, I could put like a waterproof lining in so they could be used as like a plant pot or like a, just a general putting stuff in kind of pot. So I could definitely get two or three out of uh, the rest of the, the material for those and put some nice linings in them. Oh, that sounds great. So almost like a fabric bucket then. The ones I've seen, you sometimes have handles on them. Yeah, yeah, like a little fabric bucket and I can... Yeah, exactly, I can put some li little leather handles on there so they're quite functional, multifunctional. So transforming that lot to make them good-looking, saleable and smart, have you got a price in mind for where you'll need to start? Yeah, so 175 per bag and then for the pots, uh, around about £40 each. Excellent. OK, well, I'll let you crack on with that. Get as many plants as you can, and I think they sound like they're going to be a really useful piece of kit for people to have. So see how you get on, and let me know when they're done. 
Will do. Fantastic. Thanks a lot. OK, good luck. Thank you. Well. Bye. Thanks. Bye. So I had a really good chat with Sarah. She really likes the idea of the holdalls mixing with the leather and the straps, the belts for straps, etc., and the plant pot basket type idea. So, yeah, really happy with that. Really pleased to get cracking now. Rosanna has a budget of £470 to try and transform the Hessian into two holdalls and a few hold anything pots. She's hoping to make the most of the lettering on the old sacks, but can she rewrite their future? With Ollie and Rosanna all set, in West Sussex, Sarah's at home and is ready to tackle her own project. So I do have a plan for the project as a whole. I am going to make a pair of ottomans out of the larger drawers and I'm going to photograph the rug and get some fabric printed to go over the top to pad the top of the ottomans. Sounds like a plan? Sounds like hard work, though. Sarah's already done some research and has found that this particular rug is likely to have been made in the 19th century. It's hand-woven and would have taken its maker more than a year to complete. What was that you were saying about hard work, Sarah? So you can see in places where the pattern has just been completely changed in order just to fit in properly. So here and here, there are half symbols that should look like these full ones, but somebody has thought, oh, never mind, I'll leave it like that. I kind of feel some kind of affiliation with this rug maker. Perfection wasn't sought, and I think that's quite nice. I think we can all relate to that. Before Sarah takes photos, she's giving the rug a once-over with a vacuum cleaner. I think that'll do. And then with a light detergent. You can't put a rug as old as this one on a spin wash. But somebody has definitely been looking after this. Although, I think that might be chocolate. Confectionery aside, Sarah's happy with how it's cleaned up and is hoping, as well as having pictures printed to make fabric, that she'll be able to sell the rug on in its current condition. The digital fabric printing websites are a great resource because I can send off my pictures and what I should get back is some lovely fabric. I can choose the kind of material I want and get it printed by the meter. Lovely. With her pictures sent off to the printers, Sarah's turning her attention to constructing ottomans from the drawers. Oh, I know. Do you think it'd make a better dog bed than an ottoman? What do you reckon, Margs? Is it your size? Margot's inspired Sarah to completely change course and create dog beds. What's this? In? Come on, in you go. Are you sure about this, Sarah? Dog beds rather than ottomans? Well, I think it would make a great dog bed, and I think Margot would go in it if there was a cushion. We'll use the fabric to make some bedding, shall we? Boom. Change of plan. Comfy cushions sound rather nice, but Sarah will have to wait until her fabric arrives. Come in. I see the postman. Speak of the devil. Nice. That's quite cool too. And that one. Oh, I'm super pleased with that. I'm now going to make some really big, comfortable cushions to go in here and hopefully end up with a pair of luxury kind of antique dog beds. Sarah has set tails wagging with her new plan to make dog beds. And she's starting by painting the inside of the drawers. It's really important to source the right paint because it's not unknown for our Labradors and many other dogs to chew their dog bed. So this is just the safest one you can get. Pet-friendly paint can be found in most DIY shops or online. I've got a really thick cushion to go on here, so it's not going to be a princess in the pea moment when the pooch gets in. Glad to hear it. Our four-legged friends have very high standards. So far, Sarah spent £40 having fabric printed. She's taking a big risk by deciding to change course and create pet beds. But will the new plan be the cat's pyjamas or a dog's dinner? In Margate, Ollie's about to get to work on the bridge chairs. OK, so Sarah's left me with four of these to do. These are... Well, they will be lovely bridge chairs, but you can tell all the padding is gone. It's shot to pieces. So I'm going to have to strip these down, uh, see what's under there, and then work out what we can do. 
Ollie is using a tack remover and a hammer to carefully unpick the old fabric. I quite like stripping down chairs. It's good fun. I find it quite therapeutic, actually. It's kind of exciting as well. That makes me a bit of a geek, I'm sure, but I don't mind. Look at that. Next, Ollie is removing the ancient stuffing. That's pretty horrible. There we go. I mean, that almost looks as good as the day as it went in. Fingers crossed we've got four of these. With the chair stripped back, Ollie can now concentrate on the beach frame. What I'm going to do, I'm going to use a hand sander first, get this lacquer off, and then I'm going to hand sand it so I get a really nice, smooth finish. Beechwood is found across Europe and the Americas and is used widely for furniture making. So far, so good. Uh, I've got four of these to do. <laughs> it's also used to add a smoky flavour to cheese. You learn something new every day. Uh, so that's come up really nicely after, after the sanding. There's still a bit more to do on it, but um, in the meantime, I'm just going to get some webbing, get the seat and the back on, and I'll come back to the arms later and finish them off. Ollie's using a staple gun to secure the webbing in place and a webbing stretcher to make it nice and taut. Kind of want that kind of noise is what you want. It's nice and tight, that now. He's crisscrossing it across the seat to create a nice springy base. So, seat and back all done. Next job is to put a bit of hessian on the seat and there. Ollie's measuring out the hessian, which will provide a barrier between the webbing and the seat spring unit. Right, so that's all good. Now the back. Traditional upholstery involves time-intensive weaving of hog and horse hair. But Ollie has decided to use a rubberized filling, which is made up of animal hair, coconut fabric and natural latex. It comes in sheets, which means Ollie doesn't need his needle and thread. He's covering it with spray adhesive before sticking it in place and giving it a trim. Short back and side, sir. Yeah, brilliant. <laughs> Just a bit off the top, please, mate. That's brilliant. The next thing we need to do now, we're going to use a nice wool barrier cloth, which meets fire regulations, and that's going to be really nice and ready for the top fabric. Ollie is using temporary tacks to try and ensure his woolen barrier fits snugly. Upholstering a curve is one of the hardest things to do. Right, so I'm really happy with that. That is all ready now for the top fabric, so let's have a look at what we've got. I'm excited about this. This was actually from one of my chairs at home, and I've never got round to it, so my wife is going to kill me when she finds out I've used this. But. Sometimes you get a piece and you just kind of go, I know the fabric, I've got to use it, it's going to look perfect. And this is one of them. This is going to work so nicely. And I think Sarah's going to be over the moon with it. Well, at least someone will be happy. I think it's going to look absolutely brilliant. The colour's gorgeous. The pattern's fantastic. It goes really well with these Art Deco arms. It's going to look really good, but I've got a load more to do, so I better get cracking. While Ollie cracks on, in Surrey, Rosanna's about to get to work on the Hessian sacks. I think what I'm going to do is cut this here and then have this bit on the other side. She's planning to turn the sacks into a collection of holdalls and plant pot baskets. And then I've actually got some old sofa leather and I think this will work really well on the base. Yeah. Sounds like a plan. First things first, Rosanna is sketching out her vision for the hold dolls, being careful to keep the sack's interesting typography central to her design. So what I'll do to start with is just cut down each side just to separate the front and the back, and then I'll cut the bottom off each side and then give it a good iron. Hessian is a coarse, durable fabric. It's used to ship goods such as coffee beans and tea. And it's even been used to make soldiers' uniforms. Ooh, it's 
smells rustic. <laughs> I think that's a polite way of saying it honks. Next, Rosanna's using a template to cut out her hessian and leather. Those two done. It's coming together now. I'm going to put some backing material on the leather and actually on the on the hessian to reinforce it, make it a bit stronger. Rosanna is cutting out interfacing fabric and bonding it to the leather with an iron. Now I'm going to sew across the top of the leather here, so attaching the hessian sack to the leather base, and I'll do that on the other pieces as well. She's a dab hand with a sewing machine. And if you'd like to have a go yourself, you can pick one up for as little as £35, with a wide range of online courses available to get you started. It's come out nicely. So there's the front and the back panels put together. Rosanna's promised Sarah she'll get the sacks looking smart, so she's also adding an interlining fabric and some leather offcuts. I'm making a patch pocket to go inside on the lining to put just valuables and stuff in. So I've got lots of this lovely leather, so I'm just going to put a patch of that, perhaps put a little popper at the top there to keep it closed. I end up doing a lot of gluing, but it just makes sure everything is exactly where you want it to be. So it's back to the sewing machine to sew the whole lot together. This machine likes to sing. <laughs> there we are. Great, one side stitched up. That's the lining and the zip in place. Once I've done the other side, the belt I'm going to use to make the handles will go on something like this. So, really happy with how it's going. Rosanna's first hold all is in the bag. But with so much still to do, this project is a long way from being all sewn up. In West Sussex, Sarah's putting the finishing touches to her dog beds. Ooh. Comfy, it was lovely. When she found them, the drawers and rug were headed for the skip. But now, she's combined them to create two luxurious dog beds. Sarah photographed the antique rug and used a printed material to make picture perfect cushions, fit for a best friend, not literally. The smaller drawers have been sawn in half to act as legs and lift the dog beds off the ground. And she's used pet-friendly paint in the hope of adding a contemporary splash of colour. Sarah's taken a real risk with a bold change of plan. But has she made the right choices? I mean, they aren't the most sophisticated thing I've ever made. They're not designer. They're practical. They're Great for dogs, I think. They're comfortable. They're made from excellent materials, so pooches can be safe in them. And I'm hoping that I've made good use of the rug that I found with them. So I think if somebody's got an old house and has dogs, these are going to blend in seamlessly. When Sarah met Edward, it was the end of the road for the rug and drawers. I've just been in the family a long, long time. It's very, very warm. The drawers are OK. Um, these are from my wife's grandfather. Edward was happy for Sarah to take them off. Nice to have it recycled, by all means, yes. Nice to meet you, Edward. Thank you yep, so much for no that. No problem. And he had some ideas of what she could do with them. Maybe make some nice shelving or uh, put as a fascia to other furniture to utilise the fact that it's a nice piece of old oak. The oak's still on show, Edward. But what will you make of the drawer's new use? They still look like drawers, but they also really look like dog beds. After being advertised online, the rug was sold to a boutique holiday cottage in Norfolk. Owner Alan loves it. This rug fits perfectly in with the rest of the soft furnishings in the cottage. But did Sarah manage to sell the dog beds? She's in Godalming to catch up with Edward, to show him the results and hopefully hand over some cash. Edward? Oh, hello, Sarah. Hello. Hi. Nice to see you again. <laughs> How are you? Very well, thank you. Oh, I've been really looking forward to coming back to see Good. you. Yeah. Um, the stuff at the recycling centre that was coming out of your car was 
just lovely old things. Oh, good. And I know you said the rug had been in your family for quite a while, haven't yes, it? Yes, I think since about, around about 1920. Okay. Um, I didn't quite know what to do with it, so I cleaned it up and I've found this new home. But I've pictures here to show you. I mean, I know you know it well, but um, I did give it a bit of a clean up. Yep. And it has actually been sold and gone to a lovely holiday cottage in Norfolk. Oh, Norfolk. right. OK, good. But before I let it go, I did take some photographs of it um, and I used the material to make some cushions and the drawers to make dog beds. Oh, uh, very, very in innovative. Good. Um, Excellent. Uh, my Labrador Margot, uh, ah. modelling it for size and scale there. Good. Okay, yeah, so those pictures uh, I've shared online, I think the Labrador sort of swung it. <laughs> yeah. um, and they have found new homes, that private buyers have got them. Good. So the drawers are in use, the rug is in use, and I've got profit for you. Oh, OK. I have £455 here. W worthwhile trip to the tip. <laughs> Thank I've... you very much. That's excellent. Gosh, that's unexpected. What do you think you might do with it? As they were family items, I think it's only right they go to my granddaughters, Martha and Wilma. Oh, fantastic. And how old are they? Five and two and a half, yes. yes. Oh, how exciting. Yes. Oh. Um, and are, is there anything at the moment that they're particularly into that you think they might? Or... No, I think probably go into a savings account or something like that. Oh, lovely. Probably. Thank you so much. So nice to no, catch up. thank you. Thank you very much. Good to see you. Thank you, you so too. much. Yep. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Sarah's costs came to £45. The rug and both dog beds sold for a total of £500 leaving Edward with a profit of £455 that he's going to pass on to his granddaughters to be saved for a rainy day. Brilliant. In Margate, Sarah's en route to find out how Ollie's got on transforming the four dining chairs. Chairs are all done. It's been a load of hard work. Uh, sanding them down took ages, but it was worth it. I think they look really good. Um, I hope Sarah likes them. Well, I'm really eager to see what Ollie's been up to because I felt like his detective work had already started the process of bringing those chairs back to life. But his upholstery skills, well, that's what I'm really here to see. When Sarah found the chairs, they were tired, dull and unwanted. But now... Ollie has completely rejuvenated them with a contemporary but classic new look. He stripped back the dark lacquer to reveal the light beach on the Art Deco arms and has re-upholstered the seats and backrests in a woven teal fabric, adding precision piping as a finishing touch. The chairs now comply with fire safety standards and are ready to take pride of place in a dining room once more. But will Sarah think Ollie's hit the brief? Hi, hi Ollie. Hey. Hello. Oh, Ollie, they look great. Oh, brilliant. I'm glad you like them. Such a contrast to what I left you with. You've done well there, haven't you? The sanding was a lot of work. The wood's come up gorgeous. I think they look really, really smart now. Well, they were all sort of baggy and brown before, and now they look super slick, really lovely. And the fabric's worked well on them, given the style they are and the shape, hasn't it? it I think the colour's really good. Um, the the piping just to you know just to contrast as well works really nicely. It's a little nod to the Art Deco kind of style as well. Um, you know the good thing is as well they're really comfy. Excellent. So what kind of demons were underneath that old upholstery? Yeah, but once the sanding was out of the way, it wasn't too too hard really. They all had really nice spring units in them, which okay. made the job a little bit easier because I didn't have to work with individual springs. Um, and then what we've done from there, I've really focused on using kind of environmentally friendly, sustainable materials. They've come up really good. I think it was £100 a chair was where we were at. How'd you get on? The extra time on the sanding has kind of been offset by the fact that I had a lovely fabric that was just lying around that I've managed to use. So, 400 quid, that's what we're on. Yeah, excellent. Well, keep in touch, Ol. Thanks ever so much for all of that. And I'm sorry about the sanding. <laughs> it's all right, don't worry. <laughs> good exercise. It certainly was. All right. <laughs> nice see to see you, Ollie. Bye-bye. It was a load of hard work to get them chairs right, but Sarah seemed really happy with them, so I'm, I'm over the moon about that. I'm really glad she liked them and uh, can't wait to see where they end up. Sisters Trish and Vicky were saying goodbye to the chairs when Sarah intervened. Mum died recently and they haven't got up-to-date fire credentials, so we can't sell them or anything. So the last thing we could do was bring, bring them here. They were delighted that their family furniture could potentially live on. 
mum would be so pleased, yeah, wouldn't she? she? Would. She'd be smiling. Yeah, she would. She would love for them to be I think she'd like to be there and help do it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> probably would, yes. But will Trish and Vicky be impressed with Ollie's new take on their parents' old chairs? Sarah shared pictures online and all four found new homes with private buyers. Sarah's in Guildford to show Trish how they've turned out and to hand over the profit. Oh, hello, hello. how are you doing? Oh, wow. Well. Nice, nice to see you. And you, and you. Yeah. Um, so there were some lovely chairs, and I seem to remember you saying your dad had done all that upholstery on Yes, he had, yes, to smarten them up for Mum. He'd never upholstered, and he thought he'd have a go to smarten them up a bit. Well, they had a great look, um, and actually, the, I've got pictures here of how they've been updated oh, well. by a, a lovely upholsterer called Ollie. Right. So I've got some pictures here of how they look now. They've got a new look. There's oh, a pair gosh. of them. Oh, my mum and dad would be so pleased to have seen them like that. Do you think? Yes. Just particularly my mum's style, just her style, so elegant. Those pictures have, I think, made them sell. So I've got some money right. here for you as well. Oh, wow. <laughs> I've got £380 here. Oh, wow. Absolutely amazing. I, I will pass that news on to, my, on, on to my sisters. Where might it go? What might you do with it? We never expect it to be so much anyway, but um, what we'll do is I think we'll have um, a celebratory cup of tea together and then we'll think about a charity that perhaps my mum and dad would have uh, liked the money to go to. Well, I think it's really generous of you to be looking to give back to charity. So thank you so much for letting us have them. And it's really lovely um, to catch up. And I can send you the pictures so you can show your sisters as well. But oh, thank you so really much. Oh, really nice. Thank you. Excellent. So nice to see you okay, again. Thank lovely. you very much. Thanks bye very bye. much. Bye bye. Ollie came in on budget at £400. The newly upholstered seats were sold for a total of £780, leaving Trish and her sisters with a profit of £380 that they're going to donate to charity in memory of their parents. Wonderful. Sarah's in Surrey to find out if Rosanna's been able to put a stylish new spin on the old sacks. I'm really looking forward to showing Sarah what I've done with these sacks. Uh, I think I've gone a little bit beyond what she was expecting, so I'm really, really excited to see what she thinks of what I've done. Well, you know they say you can't make a silk purse out of a sow's ear, but I'm wondering if you can make a luxury bag out of an old sack. I'm hoping that you can, because I've thrown loads of money at this one. When Sarah found the sacks, you wouldn't want to put your potatoes in them, let alone your valuables. But now... Rosanna has maximised their potential by transforming them into a collection of stylish bags and plant pots. She's put the sax typography on show to try and make the most of their character and has added reclaimed leather and cotton lining to try and achieve a luxurious look. The hard-wearing Hessian was the perfect material to create this strong and sturdy collection. And the bags are generous enough to fit your essentials into. But will Sarah be impressed with the results? Hi, Rosanna. Hello. Hi. <laughs> oh, my goodness me, there's like a sack mountain. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there's quite a lot there, isn't there? I think they look smart. I can't believe I'm saying that. You've, you've hit the brief. Yeah, I, I think they've come out really well, considering the state they're in when they arrived. Made an extra uh, bucket bag and actually made a third bag as well, because it just really lovely patterns on the sacks. You've got a really strong look to this mm. stuff, the typography, the colour of it, and combining mm. it with the leather, I think it's a winning combination. And is the leather reclaimed? It is. Both sofa leather, so that's all recycled, and this strap is actually um, a belt. <laughs> you must have blown some budgets making that lot. Talk me through the money. I stuck to budget for those, but then because I made an extra one, um, that's going to be another 60. And then because I made the extra bag, um, I managed to, because I had the templates ready, it was actually quicker by the time I did the third one, so I can drop them a little bit down to 140 each. So um, with the four baskets and the bags, what would... 600 quid, is that right? Yeah, 600, sounds good. A week ago, if you said I would invest 600 quid in that box of old sacks, I'd have been a bit worried. But actually seeing what you've made and what you've rescued, I think it's really important that things like that are done. So I'm happy with the budget, so thanks ever yeah. so much. They're great. Thank you, Thank you. Bye-bye.
So now Sarah's had a really good look at them and she loves them. I'm really happy and I'm almost sad to see them go. But yeah, I kind of want to keep hold of at least one of them. But yeah, happy with how it went and hopefully they'll, they'll sell and have a new life. When Sarah met Andrew, his old sax caught her eye. Hello there. Oh, and what are they? Old sax? Yeah, I've got them today. I'm clearing out a garage for a friend. I, I did look at them. I thought they might be useful for something, but I couldn't really think what I could do with them. So, sadly, yeah, that's why I brought them up here. Sarah saw their potential, and Andrew had an idea too. I don't know. I thought long and hard, but I don't know, maybe a bag, perhaps? Something like that. You were spot on, Andrew. They're now bags and plant pots. Sarah shared photos online and three of the pots sold to a glamping site in Kent. Sales manager Abby is delighted with them. They're totally unique. Um, they're in keeping, uh, natural material, and they just look amazing. But did Sarah manage to sell the rest? She's in Elstead to catch up with Andrew to show him the results and hopefully hand over some cash. Hello. Andrew. Hi, how are you doing? I'm good, yeah, how are you? Yes, very well, thank you. And come back to uh, update you about the sacks that you were dropping off. Um, they were really old, weren't they? Yeah, they, they were, I think they're back to the 60s. Well, they had some amazing writing on them, actually, and I think that's what made them so desirable. Yeah, I, I, know, I think the writing is what made me think they might be um, worth doing something with. Um, so I'm sure you've been thinking about it. What do you think I've done with them? I, I thought maybe bags, but then I thought maybe some wall art or even cushion covers, perhaps. I don't know. There were a few options, but the typography made them really appealing. So they went to lovely bag maker Rosanna. Fantastic. They now look like that. Oh, wow. She has created some storage uh, baskets and also some weekend bags, reusing all of that lovely print that she found on them and also four storage containers. Great, that looks excellent. Do you, would you recognise them? No, not at all. <laughs> they look fantastic. They look really smart, yeah, don't they? Yeah, they do, yeah. Uh, so do you approve of the reuse? Uh, absolutely, absolutely, yes. Um, they now have found new homes as well. Excellent. Um, some have gone off to shops, um, but lots of them are already in use with private buyers. So I've got some profit for you. Even better. I have £145 here for you. That's incredible. Wow, that's brilliant. I'm really, really pleased with that and, and surprised, yeah, yeah. So £145 there. What are you going to do with it? Well, we're having some garden fence renewed, so I think probably put it towards that, yeah. Do you know something? When you're sitting in the garden and having a cup of tea and you've got your new fence up, think about us <laughs> and enjoy, enjoy the view. I will. Thank you very much. And take care. Nice to see you. Thank you. you. Bye-bye. Bye. Rosanna's costs to turn the sacks into a collection of bags and pots came to £600. They were all sold for a total of £745, meaning Andrew has £145 of profit to put towards a new fence for his garden. Sarah saved three items from being lost forever. The dining chairs have been lovingly restored and are off to new homes. The sacks have been repurposed as stylish bags and pots. And the rug and drawers have been saved and live on. Well, Rosanna and Ollie pulled out all the stops to transform my tip finds. Now, rather than being lost, they've been transformed and are off to new homes.